Games Workshop makes the best models in the world. But who cares if the prices are too high and they're sold out all the time? In this video, I'll talk about diminishing returns in wargaming and how you can solve the problem. This is a bit of a rant uh, I've been thinking about for some time now, and I have to get on a plane tomorrow morning for the Las Vegas Open. Uh, today's Tuesday, you know, so I figured that this would be a good time to film this one, shorter week and all that kind of stuff. After I get back, I have a bunch of painting and terrain project tutorials that I want to work on, but they take a lot more time during the week. Also, if you're going to be at LVO, come by and say hi. Recently, I made a video here on the channel about the great line of miniatures from North Star Military Figures for Frostgrave and for Stargrave, and why I like it. You can check it out here. Pachow. In that video, I mentioned about Games Workshop and the diminishing returns of their models versus how much they charge for them. The North Star figures are considerably better value in simple comparison, and I, I kind of mentioned that I could do a video about that idea, that diminishing returns thing, if people were interested, and if they were interested, they could comment down below. A lot of folks did, so here we are. Games Workshop has obviously been making models for a long time now. Even before Warhammer, they were making models for tabletop gamers to use. You could use them in role-playing games or, you know, whatever rule set you wanted. Most hobbyists, people who paint to game primarily, will say that GW models are the best in the tabletop wargaming space these days. If you're a display painter, right, well, then there's a lot of like fancy busts and large scale, scale you know, like 75 millimeter like resin pieces out there and that kind of stuff. And those are generally seen as better for those types of folks. But for gaming, most people seem to prefer the quality of Games Workshop models. When you're first getting into the wargaming hobby, Games Workshop models are probably the main models that you'll see out there. G-Dub's marketing game is pretty strong these days. I hear the same thing from new players and painters all the time when I talk about any models that aren't from Games Workshop here on the channel. It's always like, wow, I've never seen those before, I had no idea. That makes Games Workshop pretty well entrenched in the wargaming market, and it's a position they'll probably keep for the foreseeable future. Maybe. There are a few other companies out there that might be giving GW a run for its money, at least in the, like, quality department, right? Weird Games, with their line of Malifaux plastic miniatures, for example, especially the newer stuff. They're very dynamic and detailed plastic miniatures that, uh, that match or even rival a lot of Warhammer sculpts. That said, their game isn't as popular as Warhammer games are, so they obviously sell fewer units. Like I said before, Games Workshop seems entrenched, but there's certainly something that might change that. Now, don't get me wrong, I still love a lot of Games Workshop's models. Not every model they make is aesthetically for every person, of course. There are models that they make that I just don't enjoy the look of, but I still know that they're very well done technologically or whatever, you know? They're very well sculpted, it's just not for me. I don't want this to be seen as a video hating on GW. It's not. If anything, I want this to be seen by folks at GW, specifically the suits at the company, if you know what I mean. And I want them to see this maybe as a warning. And the warning is about price and tipping points. Everything is more expensive these days. And that's not just me being an old man, you know. Back in my day, it's, it's, it's just straight up global inflation that we've seen kind of rear its ugly head over the last three years or so. And I have no idea when or if it can actually be fixed or not. That's, that's above my pay grade, as they say, right? But as most of you know, while Games Workshop might make some of the best wargaming miniatures in the world, they're also making some of the most expensive miniatures in the world as well. And this has been going on for far longer than the last three years. But is the ever-increasing price that GW keeps charging for these miniatures actually worth it? And does it even make sense half the time? Like, should a single model, uh, like Ursula Creed here from the Imperial Guard, should she cost as much as a single Armager, right? Big two-legged chicken walker monster thing, right? Like that, you know, robot. Uh, should she cost only five bucks less than an entire unit of 10 Cadian shock troops and like all their options and guns and gear and all that other stuff? If I were an actual economist, I could spout a bunch of stuff about what the market will bear and all that kind of jazz and, and whatnot, but, but that's not what I went to school for. 
but as a long-term wargamer and a YouTube nerd, I can see problems. In essence, whether something is worth a certain amount of money is completely dependent upon whether a person is willing to pay that amount. For example, in another kind of genre in the tabletop gaming world, collectible trading card games, there are Magic the Gathering cards out there. Have you heard about this? Uh, that are worth a lot of money, like a lot of money. Famous musician Post Malone spent $2 million for a single Lord of the Rings-themed Magic card last year. I would have maybe given you two bucks for it. Maybe. So price is subjective, which shouldn't be surprising to anyone, I suppose. As long as people continue to buy products, especially luxury products like wargaming miniatures, then the prices will continue to at least stay the same and potentially rise. That said, there is something known as a tipping point, and I wonder how soon before we see it really start to take effect here. The idea of the tipping point is found in all kinds of things, large-scale social interactions, meteorology, physics, and also economics. The thing about tipping points is that once that tip is started, there's generally no way to stop it. The amount of time it takes to build up to that tipping point can be very, very long. It can go on for years and years. But when the tip happens, it very quickly builds momentum and changes will happen fast. Corrections can try to be made, you know, price corrections, production corrections, things like that. But they probably won't have much effect. So what does all this mean? What it means is that Games Workshop is putting their entire product line into a position of diminishing returns for their customers. They're charging more and more for fancier models and also charging more, you know, for not so fancy models, honestly, and also more for fancier books, which quickly kind of go out of use due to a three year game edition cycle. And they're doing all of this while also not even making enough product for the people who are still interested in paying so much for these products. All while the choices in other miniatures grows with 3D printing. I recently bought a Warhammer 40,000 Combat Patrol box from my local independent shop. Previous to that, it had been easily six months or more since I'd bought anything from Games Workshop, and it's mainly due to diminishing returns. The price they want for the products, no matter how fancy they may be, is just not worth it to me. So, so you're, you're getting out of wargaming there, Uncle Adam? Is that, is that what I hear you say? You've stopped buying wargaming miniatures and products? Oh, gosh, no, no. Uh, I've, I've mostly stopped buying Warhammer products, but not wargaming products. In the last six months, I've bought all kinds of wargaming products. The awesome mech game Steel Rift, and uh, two complete forces for that game. I bought Judge Dredd from Warlord Games. I bought Stargrave and Frostgrave figures, you know, from North Star Minis, which I mentioned previously. Wargames Atlantic figures... Uh, several M4 Sherman tanks for our game Tanks for the Apocalypse that Vince and I made. Uh, some very cool 3D printed uh, terrain, some MDF terrain, and plastic kit terrain that I can use in tons of different games that I like to play. And also I picked up a whole bunch of STLs from Knucklebones Miniatures and a bunch of other sculptors that can be used for all kinds of different cool rule sets that I picked up online from places like Wargame Vault. I'm not sure when Games Workshop's tipping point will actually come. As I said, I'm not an economist. But I've also been in this hobby for a pretty long time, and I can see the writing on the wall is different than it's ever been before. With the additions to the equation of global inflation, stagnant wages, underproduction, and now the newer issues of more and more competition and the entire 3D printing thing, right? The world seems to be pressing against Games Workshop's tipping point more than ever before in their history. But you don't have to worry. There are a lot of other companies and games and just plain options available to you in the wargaming space. I see people making like videos and tweets and posts and whatnot about how like GW has to fix this. But the truth is they don't have to if the suits don't want them to, right? They don't have to fix nothing. The fact is you can fix this easily and cheaply. Look at other games and models and paint companies and whatever and purchase from them instead. That's one of the coolest things about tabletop gaming. You as the player slash buyer have all the agency. You want to play one company's game with another company's models? You totally can. No one can stop you, right? 
but GW won't allow non-GW models in their events, I hear you say. Well, then don't go to those events. Only play in events that allow you to proxy and use the models that you prefer. You're in control here. You're the one with the wallet, the one with the debit card. There are lots of other companies out there in the wargaming space, and you don't owe GW anything. You can play and collect and hobby and buy however you want. We'll see how and when this GW tipping point will occur. When it comes, you'll definitely see a bunch of changes and attempts at changes but will it really help? If you've put all of your wargaming eggs in Games Workshop's basket, then you'll probably be pretty concerned. But if you've decided to diversify, you won't have to worry about it. What do you think? Do you think it'll actually ever happen? Or do you think that maybe the tip has already started and we're already, you know, it, it, amongst it? Let me know down in the comments uh, below. Uh, you know, like the, the video if you if you liked it and uh, helps to spread the word helps me helps the channel uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos every single Friday and thanks for watching.